Hi, I'm Sunita Rodriguez. I love my kids, my husband, my job, and I love to cook. My mantra is to cook it simple, to cook it good, and to cook it with soul. I've trained as a chef at the Taj Group of Hotels and traveled to food festivals all over the globe. My tactics and tricks hold the secret to cooking up happy times. Join me on Meals on the Run with Sunita. Hi, I'm Sunita Rodriguez and welcome to Meals on the Run. I'm going to show you some really stress-free recipes for some exotic and simple food. You can see the bananas struggling there but they have no hope. Great dish to make when you are in a hurry and on the run. Don't you just love a good picnic? Well, I do. And the best part of the picnic is the food. So today I'm going to make some really yummy picnic food. I'm going to start out with my scallion and bean hash, followed by my banana bread muffins with dates and walnuts. I'm going to then make some yummy crispy chicken piccatas with a creamy mint dip and of course a good picnic sandwich. I'm going to start out with my scallion and bean hash. Well, I recommend that you always have boiled potatoes in your fridge and you can store them with the skin on. I'm just going to get a bowl for me to mash up these potatoes. Potatoes are extremely versatile. Whenever you're using potatoes for mashed potato or for any kind of fries, I recommend that you use old potatoes. Avoid new potatoes because they are really starchy and they get all gooey and that's not the kind of potatoes that you really want in a hash or in a mashed potato. But hash browns are also made sometimes with grated potato where you can grate potatoes directly and put it onto you know, a hot pan of butter till it forms a nice crispy hash brown. But my hash today is more like little patties. You can quickly get off the skins and put them in here. Just roughly chop it up. And then all you need to do is press down with all your body weight and mash up all the potatoes. It doesn't take too long. So I have here the potatoes mashed. Now I'm going to add some nice chopped scallions or spring onions. I'm going to add the whole lot because I like the crunchiness that it brings to it. And I have some kidney beans that I'm going to put in too. A little bit of garam masala, a little bit of salt. I'm going to spice this just a little bit. So I want some green chilies. Well, just a squeeze of lime. And of course, some nice fresh green coriander snipped into it. And I'm going to just mash up the beans just a little bit. And now it's time to shape up. I'm going to very quickly put in a little bit of flour in this plate, spread it all around. Form nice fist size little balls here. Dip it a little bit into this flour, roll it up using the back end of my knife into a nice little patty there. So I have my chops here and get down with frying them. A little bit of vegetable oil. This is great different food as well as picnic food. I'm going to put these Let them get nice and brown on a slow fire. And then when they're done on one side, just stir them around. As you can see, the scallion inside is raw. So it gives a very nice, refreshing, salad-like taste when you eat it on the inside. Serve them up very quickly. It's a great dish for an impulsive picnic or a friend who suddenly popped in or a relative. A little snipping of fresh coriander all around to make it all the more prettier. My scallion and bean hash, all over in just a jiffy. I'm just gonna have a quick bite. The spring onions is crunchy, so is the coriander. 
and the garam masala lends a nice little Indian touch to it. Simple to make and even simpler to eat. Well, what's a picnic without muffins of some sort? Today we're going to make banana bread muffins with dates and walnuts. To begin with, I need some eggs. I'm going to take two eggs here and separate them, the whites in one bowl. I need to whisk this, but before that, I need to whisk my egg white. Now the reason I do this first is I don't want to wash the whisk and I can't get any fat onto this whisk. I'm just whisking it up because I want to add a little bit of volume to my muffins. I think that's about it. I have my egg yolks here. I have four lovely yellow bananas. I'm going to put in about one cup of curd, about a cup of brown sugar, just a small teeny bit of salt and about a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. Now I'm just going to go back in there with my mixer. You can see the bananas struggling there but they have no hope at all. It's become a nice, thick, mushy paste. I'm going to take both this now here, fold in the egg whites with all that air incorporated inside you're going to get a really nice light muffin. So my egg whites in, dates, sticky and gooey, it's really nice inside the muffin. Some nice roasted walnuts, you can use walnuts or Academia nuts or pistachios or cashew nuts or whatever nuts you can possibly find. I'm gonna quickly put this in but I'll save some to garnish it on top. And I just need to quickly put in about one and a half cup of sieved flour. Before I put that in, I'm gonna just put in about a teaspoon of soda bicarb into that of baking soda. Mix that up just a little bit. And ever so gently, sift that flour all over it and fold. I like to add it a little at a time because then it prevents the lumps from forming. Very little fat, as you can see. You can be sure it's not the children only who are going to be reaching out for it. The easiest way to do this is with an ice cream scoop. Put a little of this on top so that everyone knows what's inside. Well, all that's left now is to put it in the oven. I already have the oven preheated to about 250 degrees for about 15 minutes. I'm going to pop that in. My next dish is perfect for a romantic picnic for two, but it serves just as well if you want to have your friends and family over too. Chicken piccatas with a creamy mint dip. So I'm going to start off with some chicken breast that I have here. Two nice plump chicken breasts. Piccata is an Italian dish, a flattened piece of meat, either meat or chicken. But I'm going to make it this time with a little Indian flavor. A little bit of ginger garlic paste, about half a teaspoon. And some Indian spices here, some coriander powder, cumin, quarter of a teaspoon. Just a pinch of chili flakes. Some thyme. Some salt. And some lime. Just mix that up just a little bit and put the chicken pieces inside. They don't require too much of marination because I've really hammered them up there. I'm going to now crumb them. So for that, I need an egg, flour and breadcrumbs. 
Coming is a very basic method used for a lot of dishes, fish and chips. Crumb fried fruit is popular with adults and children alike. So the day you're off your diet, you can probably have this one. I have my chicken breast here. I'm gonna first dip it in flour. Just lightly dab it there. Then egg. And then breadcrumbs. I'm gonna leave this to one side here while I do the other one. Flour, egg and breadcrumbs. Egg acts as a binder and holds those breadcrumbs together. I'm now gonna heat up a pan with a little bit of vegetable oil. This is a really simple dish. Into the oil. My food calls out to me. I can hear my chicken asking me to turn it. A nice golden color. What I'm gonna do now is quickly get a creamy mint dip ready while my chicken piccatas are cooking. Some green chilies, a little mint, a little bit of coriander. I'm gonna put in the leaves and the stalks as well. You can use double the coriander as compared to the mint. About two cloves of garlic. This is the best way to peel garlic as I've told you before. I have a little bit of cream here, about two tablespoons of cream and about two nice big chunky tablespoons of yogurt. And I'm gonna close this up. Into the bowl and keep it to serve with my piccatas later. Keep the fire slow so that the breadcrumbs get nice and brown and don't burn. Maybe you can surprise your husband with this when he comes home from work today. I like to experiment with the different flavors that are available in the spices that we have. Indian food has a whole range of flavors. And sometimes, a blend of Indian herbs and spices and Western herbs can just bring about that magic you've been waiting for. The chicken is done. Put it out here. Coriander, a wedge of lime. And there it is, my chicken piccatas with a nice, spicy, creamy mint dip. That chicken is really nice and tender. And that strong green chili and mint flavor in the dip really complements the cumin, coriander, and thyme mix in my chicken. Truly a dish you have to try out at home. Well, who hasn't had a sandwich at a picnic? My next dish is a basic classic sandwich, but I'm gonna take it to a different level. I'm gonna start out with some bell pepper. I would recommend you use metal skewers, but if you don't have them, then you can soak some wooden skewers in water for some time and use them. I'm gonna roast this bell pepper. Roasting bell pepper, rather, is an amazing way to actually give the bell pepper a totally different flavor. It blisters up the skin, it softens it up and mellows the flavor of the bell pepper totally. I'm gonna to use this bell pepper in my salad. Well, I know I've made this lovely green bell pepper turn all bubbly, but once I remove off that skin, the green still is underneath. You can use it without roasting it, but the flavor will be completely different. So, that's about done. Now, before this cools down, I'm gonna Cover it up very gently. I'm gonna keep it on the side for later. The heat that is generated there will release the skin of the bell pepper and allow me to remove it and peel it very easily. So just for a little while, 
while I get my tomato ready. Just gonna cut nice big slices of tomato there. Put that here in a plate. Break up some iceberg lettuce. A must have for any sandwich. I have here some cheese, some jalapeno peppers, and some nice chicken salami. While these ingredients are ready, my bell pepper has sweated for long enough. And with my cloth, I'm just gonna peel that skin away to reveal an even more beautiful bell pepper inside. It is said a diamond is not a diamond unless it goes through fire. And I would say the same thing about the bell pepper. So don't be worried if there are a few little pieces of skin left. It's perfectly fine. You can cut that out. I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. I'm using these vegetables, but you can use whatever you have in your house. I have these nice hot chili peppers here, jalapenos. And put them right here. I'll just drizzle a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and pepper. Now that that's done, it's down to my crusty baguette. You can cut it from one side. Use mayonnaise or any other dressing that you like, but I'm gonna use plain and simple butter. So I have here some butter. Just a very basic, simple, quick, easy sandwich. Something that you can take for a picnic or you can take to work. A little bit of mustard. And then simple assembly of the sandwich. So I'm gonna start out here with some lettuce. You can use any leftover vegetables too. Of course, you'll have to grill them and cook them. You can have chicken, you can have vegetables, you can have meat, you can have fish, you can have whatever you want in a sandwich. I'm gonna put in some slices of chicken salami with some lovely red tomatoes, a slice of cheese in the middle, roasted bell peppers here, some spicy jalapeno peppers, it's really gonna give you a kick. And to finish off, some more crunchy iceberg lettuce. I have iceberg, but you can use whatever is available. Well, you can just as easily close it like this if you're gonna eat it at home. But if you're taking it out for a picnic, then you want something that's gonna hold a little more. So I'm gonna cut it here and close it from the top. So here it is, my scrumptious, huge and totally filling picnic sandwich, ready in just a jiffy. And now it's time for me to sink my teeth into this humongous sandwich. Hmm. I think I just got half of the huge amount of filling that's inside. I got the roasted bell pepper and the cheese mixed up with the chicken salami. I haven't yet reached the jalapeno. It's a great sandwich and a great dish to make when you are in a hurry and on the run. And now let's go and check on those muffins that we had put in the oven earlier. Wow, I love the smell of freshly baked muffins. Well, these certainly have risen to the occasion. I'm just gonna put them here ever so nicely. A little hot. Look at the crunchy walnuts. So here it is banana bread muffins with dates and walnuts. Some 
we're just going to take a quick bite. Mmm, I got my most favorite part, nice crunchy roasted walnut. It's light, easy on the stomach, easy on the lips. Not heavy like a normal muffin, not rich. Can be had for breakfast or for tea, whenever you like it. This one's really a keeper, something that is easy and quick to make whenever you have just a little time. So today I've made some really fabulous and easy picnic food. To begin with, my scallion and bean hash, followed by that banana bread muffin, studded with dates and walnuts. And of course, those crunchy chicken piccatas with the spicy mint creamy dip. And last but definitely not the least, my nice big classic sandwich in a baguette. I'm gonna go now, but please catch me next time for some more great and fabulous Meals on the Run. Till then, from me, Sunita, it's bye-bye.